Zach is back. It's the Zach Geld Show on Fox Sports 920, The Jersey. Yes, yes, that's us, the debut of the Zach Gelb Show on Fox Sports 920, The Jersey. You can listen to us in Bucks, Burlington, and Mercer counties on 920 AM or check us out on the web at 920thejersey.com. NBA Finals tonight, Game 6, Warriors and the Cavs. And now joining us on the hotline is a man that played in the NBA Finals and also was a member of the New York Knicks and the Golden State Warriors, and that is the great John Stewart. Starks, who joins us right now. John, it's Zach Gelb. Thanks for a few minutes, and how are you, my friend? I'm doing good. How you doing? Well, I'm doing great, and we appreciate you giving us a few minutes today. So I want to play you a quick audio clip, and I'm sure it's something that everyone brings up to you each and every day. So listen up. Starks! Yes! What a move by Starks, who was able to sky to the basket. So how about that, John? Everyone, I'm sure, brings that up to you each and every day when you dunked over Grant and Jordan. What memories come to mind when you hear Marv Albert with that yes bring up that dunk? Uh, obviously, it was exciting um, times uh, during those times, uh, back during the playoffs and playing against Chicago Bulls and Pacers. And, you know, it was just fun. Basketball was fun at that time. And, um, you know, obviously that play is brought up so many times. Uh, I can honestly say I didn't heard about it since uh, I retired every single day. (laughs) You know, it's just amazing. Well, that must be nice. And I'll say this, because those Jordan teams were so good over such a long period of time, and you know that better than anybody else. And this year, that Jordan team was really brought up a lot because that 95-96 team that had 72 wins were surpassed by the Warriors that had 73 wins. When you take a look back at those Bulls teams for all those years, what stands out to you after all these years? Uh, Obviously, Michael Jordan. First and foremost, uh, then, you know, you had three Hall of Famers on that team, Dennis Rodman and as well as uh, Scottie Pippen was on that team, and they had a very good supporting cast, uh, you know, but Michael made the ship, you know, made the engine go. And, you know, one thing about him, he was just a very special player, and his will to win overseeded everything. And I think that's what, uh, I think what made that team so special because everybody followed him and believed in themselves. You know, you had solid players, but they t- tend to lift their game to another level, obviously, because of him, you know, because they put so much trust in him. And you know if the Warriors win tonight, everyone's already compared the 95-96 Bulls to the Warriors. People will take it to the next level because that's what we do when you have these all-time great teams from different era. If the 95-96 Bulls were to play this year's Warriors, who do you think wins that game? 95-96 Bulls. Why? I think, you know, obviously Ron Harper was on that team too and Tony Kukoc was on that team, so... Those, I think Kukoc would have been a, a matchup problem against anybody because he was basically like uh, Kevin Durant, you know, at that early stage. And he could do everything, you know. He could shoot it from outside. He could take you off the dribble. He, he can rebound. He can block shots. He did everything. And uh, I think that they can switch every from every position, one, two, three, four, and five, and, and guard. And so... Uh, and then the difference maker would probably be Michael Jordan, obviously. You know what I mean? If, 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 no matter what rules you play, if you if you didn't have hand checking rules, uh, I hate to see <laughs> him in this game today. And you were so great with the Knicks from 1990 to 1998. Like you're saying, fans remember you for that dunk, but they also remember you for a bunch of other things that you do, and now you do a great job with your foundation. You can check out that website at johnstarts.org. We'll talk about it in a little bit. But So you have that dunk in 93, then Jordan retires. You guys don't win that series after you went up 2-0, and then you're in, in it again, although Jordan retired 1994, you guys find yourself in the finals, and in the same building as you, you have the New York Rangers also in the finals. Describe that euphoria for me in New York City in 1994, because those were some crazy times. No, those was exciting times. Um, you know, to have Rangers in the finals at the same time that we were in the finals, uh, New York was lit up, you know, for about three months. 
it was lit up. I literally have guys come up to me uh, today and, and tell me that they didn't get no sleep uh, because, you know, the Rangers was on one one night, then we was on the next night. And I know a lot of bars made a lot of money during that time. <laughs> so, uh, But it was just electric. Uh, during that time, uh, I think the city was just fired up about, you know, having uh, two of their favorite uh, sports franchises in the finals at the same time. Yeah, now I complain all the time that the games are too late. The fact the final starts at 9 tonight, uh, I'm not, I'm not going to have much sleep tonight <laughs> as we're talking yeah. to John Starks, who joins us right now. So... Right now you have LeBron James. In his career in the finals, he's averaged 26.8 points per game, 10.1 rebounds per game, and 7.1 assists per game. And even like a performance he had in Game 5, the fan now on Twitter tries to find an excuse to discredit LeBron James. I opened up the show today talking about how people need to appreciate LeBron James. But you very well know, if they lose tonight, everyone's going to have those crying Jordan memes all over Twitter. Is there ever a... In the the history of sports, especially the NBA, a player that's been under more pressure than LeBron James? Uh, I can't think of one. Uh, I think just because of, you know, how things came his way and, you know, and you ordain yourself the king. So if you're the king, you're supposed to get it done every single night. And, and so I think some of that pressure is kind of brought on from him. And, you know, and I think people just goes back to the way he left Cleveland the first time, obviously. You know, you probably still have some people that have a bad taste in their mouth about that. And so, you know, you always going to have people that hate you. You always have people that love you. And, you know, but when you put yourself on top, you know, you have to perform. And there's no way of getting around it. And so... You say you're the best player in the game, so you have to come out and prove that you're the best player night in and night out. And if you don't do that, you know you're always gonna have the distra- uh, you know uh, people that's gonna say that you know you're not the best player and you didn't perform at a high level. And you know everything predicated, you know, that's basically looking at his championship records. And so, but I, I tell people that the. It's a team game that wins championship. No one player wins championship. Uh, it's, you know, a player obviously can, you know, your superstar is supposed to close championships, but, you know, you, it's a team effort. So uh, I think he just, I think over the years, he just kind of put pressure on himself, and that's what you're getting, that's what you're seeing right now. You're exactly right. Teams win championships, and if LeBron is going to want to force a Game 7 tonight, you expect him to show up. You expect Kyrie Irving to show up, especially after their performances that they had in Game 5. But you need something out of Kevin Love, who has been awful in these NBA Finals. 8.8 points per game and 6 rebounds are his averages. How do you explain what Kevin Love is doing? Because he's been god-awful in this series, John. Well, I think, you know... LeBron and Kyrie dominates the ball. <laughs> you know, Kevin Love used to get in touches, and he had to get touches. And I think, you know, obviously when he was in Minnesota, he was the man. He was the go-to guy. And it's kind of, I'm not sure if he's comfortable of playing that second field to LeBron and Kyrie. And, you know, he's he's a volume type of guy who needs touches. And I don't think he's getting a, enough touches to show what he can do. I don't think he's a guy that you just sit outside and, and once you get trapped, you kick it out to him, he's going to be consistently knocking down threes. You know, he'd rather be in the low post and, and touching the ball. And so, but that's hard to do. Uh, obviously, Kyrie, he had to have the ball in his hand. And LeBron, not so much, but he still had to have the ball in his hands in order for him to be effective. So, uh, I think Kevin Love is going to have to be patient. I think he's just going to... If they lose the series, obviously he's going to get a lot of uh, the blame to it, uh, along with everybody else. But uh, but I think it's, it's unfair, um, you know, what people are putting on him uh, because he's not getting the touches that he needs to be effective in the series. Fair. And I don't think he's, from this point on, I don't think he's going to get those touches, especially after what LeBron and Kyrie did in, in game number five. So I think they're going to try to duplicate that performance tonight. 
Fair point, and we're also going to have to see how this series changes with Bogut no longer being there, but you get Draymond Green back tonight. First off, as a guy that's been around basketball for many years, do you think Draymond Green should have been suspended for Game 5? Um, you know, is a, what did it say? You stuck your hand in the, in, in the cookie jar too many times. An area and, you don't go. <laughs> yeah, the area you don't go. So, uh, you know, was it warranted? Probably so. You know, so I think the league just had to do something. They, they couldn't let that pass by. So I know a lot of conspiracy theories that the league wanted a game six. But, you know, he did what he did. It was just unfortunate he did what he did, and he got he got fined and suspended for it, and and so, but you didn't hear Golden State too much crying about it. You know, they said a few things, but they didn't use it as as an excuse, and and I think you can't use an excuse. You still got players that's capable of going out there and winning, and and so, um, but I like their mentality. It, you know, they have no excuse. What they're talking about self carry may be hurt, this and that, but he has no excuse. He's telling everybody he's not hurt. He may be hurt, but he, you know, in his mind, he don't want his opponent to have any advantage of him. So, uh, but I, I, I expect for them to come out and play a much better game. Uh, uh, they, they all wasn't clicking on that day uh, in game number five, and it was obvious because Steph, as well as Clay, missed some wide open threes that used uh, used for them used to them hit him those type of shots as well as Harrison Barnes he he didn't play well at all and he could dollar I think everybody felt bad but not winning it on their home court but they know that they got to get it done tonight uh, rather than not they want to go back for a game seven I wouldn't think that, think they do but uh, I think they're gonna come out and play a much better game tonight and I think Cleveland's gonna play a much better game tonight too. I would say up until this point in this series, Draymond Green's the MVP. How about you? I uh, yeah, you could make a, make a point for that. He he definitely can. You know, he's he's key to what they're trying to get done out there on the court, especially on the defensive end of the court. I think that's where they miss him the most. And so, uh, but he could if Steph come out and have a great game, more likely he probably end up getting it. You know, you never know. It, it's up in the air who will get the MVP. But right now, I don't think they're worrying about no MVP. I think they're trying to close out this series. As we're talking to John Starks right now on the Zach Elb Show, Fox Sports 920, the Jersey. A few more minutes with the former Nick and also Golden State Warrior. John, uh, I would have to imagine as we're talking about Draymond Green, a big key for the Cavs tonight as uh, they won't have to go up against Andrew Bogut is to get Draymond in some early foul trouble. I would say that would be a big key for the Cavs tonight, right? I would think so. Uh, but, you know, they have guys that's capable of coming out there, uh, especially uh, Festus. He, he's capable of coming out there and filling the same role that uh, Bogut uh, fulfilled and blocking shots. And he may be a, a little bit better offensively down low. And so uh, one thing about Steve Curry, he's been here and he's been in situations many a times. And, you know, you, you got to think about it. They, they played it. Uh, a lot of times without Bogut on the court because of his injuries and still been effective. So uh, I don't think they worried about that. Uh, I think they know that if they hit shots, and especially the three balls, that that it's going to be hard for Cleveland to match them, you know, shot for shot. You know, like like you know, one guy say that was just uh, a very special night that you saw the other night in Game Five with two of the guys. LeBron and Kyrie were just on, and and the other two superstars was off at the wrong time, especially in the fourth quarter, you know. And so, um, it, it should be a totally different ball game tonight, I would expect. Now, I did some research, and back in 1994 and the 1995 season, you hit 217 three pointers. That's now 30th best all time. Back in the day, <laughs> that used to be right up there as the best, and now people are hitting uh, three point shots out of the wazoo. Steph and Clay this year, Steph had 402, and Clay had 276. When you see that many three pointers fall, what goes through your mind? Game has changed. <laughs> <laughs> the game has changed. You know, it's it's, it's back to uh, you know taking pride in shooting the basketball. I think everybody's taking pride, and that's good to see uh, because you, you remember 
um, probably in the early 2000s, everybody was talking about he's a driver. You know, guys was trying to drive a, a, a duck and, and, and what have you. They weren't even specializing in the mid-range shot or none of that. But I think Steph and Clay and the excitement of shooting the basketball is back in the game. And I'm happy to see that, you know, because I think guys have to be able to shoot the ball in order to play at this level. And it, for years it wasn't like that. Either they was just trying to get to the basket or just jacking threes up. Not sure if they're going to make it or not. But the mid-range game was gone. But it is good to see that that part of the game has really exploded. And you see the – the young players that's coming in are shooting the ball much better now. Now, I want you to be honest with me, and I think we're pretty good friends after this interview. If you play <laughs> now, let's say you lace them up in the year 2016, how many three-pointers does John Starks hit this year? Oh, man, I'm not sure. I would hit a lot, you know, because it's a wide-open game. I was telling people that I played in, in a league like this. It was called the World Basketball League where we had – guys six five and under but you know you had guys that's like six eight six nine playing uh you know center position forward position but it was up and down up and down kind of like what the league is now it's up and down and i average like 28 29 points but this firing threes and knocking down threes you know the court was wide open so it's a lot of fun to play that style of basketball you know i enjoyed it but I like the style that we played back then, too, you know, where it was like hard no, get after one another, defensive-minded teams. You know, I like that style, too. But I'd, I'd love to play in this this brand of basketball during this era. So I'll mark you down for like 345 three-pointers. <laughs> sounds good? Yeah, yeah, sounds good. <laughs> real quickly before we let John Starks run, tell me real quickly about the John Starks Foundation, and you can visit it at johnstarks.org. Well, the foundation that I started back in 1994 to raise money for graduating students in high school to move on to college and give them opportunity that uh, I didn't have coming out and because I wasn't recruited uh, out of high school. So I had to go through the whole process of trying to find uh, scholarship money, and I know how hard that is. It's, and, you know, I just wanted to, you know, give uh, a young man, a young woman an opportunity to further their careers and, and give them opportunity to be successful in life. And so I started this foundation, and we've been going very strong since 1994. We've sent hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of kids to school, and uh, I'm glad to say that, you know, we're still standing after so many years and continue to provide, you know, assistance to these young people. Well, that's excellent stuff, and we appreciate you coming on the show today. But real quickly, before we let you run, how's the golf game been? Don't you have a, a membership at Woodlock Pines? Uh, no, I don't have a membership. I do go out there and play. Uh, uh, you know, Woodlock Pines is a great, great uh, golf course, a great uh, resort area. So I, I do enjoy going out there when I do play. Uh, no, I'm actually down because I just had a hip replacement, actually. Ooh. And so uh, I'm down for the next couple of weeks or so. So hopefully I'll be back out there uh, swinging and knocking it around. Well, we hope you're back on the golf course soon. And just remember, when it's breezy, swing it easy. Once again, that's johnstarks.org to visit the John Starks Foundation. John, we appreciate the time. This was a whole lot of fun. All right. Thank you. There he is, John Starks, joining us on the hotline. This is 920 The Jersey Fox Sports Radio. You could call us at 609 609- 919-9200 as we're here today in the Princeton Orthopedic Associate Studios. Time here is 436. Dan Patrick will join us in about three minutes or so.